in the last video we had spoken about 10 of those announcements where the honorable finance minister announced these before the press and we covered those 10 announcements in this video we would cover 20 of those announcements which are coming by way of recommendations in the gst council 53rd meeting but were not announced in the press release before the press the first one is with respect to the gst council which recommends that exemption from compensation says levable on the imports in SEZ by SEZ unit developer for authorized operations must be given from 1st of July 2017. There are three important aspects to it. The benefit will be only for compensation says the benefit will be only for authorized operations and most importantly the benefit comes from 1st of July which means that even for the past this benefit will be eligible. The second one is a big relief to the insurance sector and what the GST council recommends is that the co-insurance premium in a co-insurance agreement would be declared as no supply under schedule 3 of the CGST act. This brings a big relief to the insurance sector which had made these representations. At the same time, the transactions of seeding commission and reinsurance commission will also get the benefit under schedule three. The other point is with respect to the clarification that retrocession is reinsurance of reinsurance and therefore eligible for the exemption. And this brings a big relief to the insurance sector. The third announcement is with respect to the statutory fee, which is levied by RERA and the GST council has very categorically provided that there will not be any GST on these statutory fees. Please remember that statutory fee has been a subject matter of debate before different courts, be that the licensing fee for casinos, etc. And these matters are pending before different courts. With this announcement coming for the RERA statutory fee, I think it will give some sort of relief to a lot of other plays as well. The fourth is with respect to the benefit which the acquiring banks will get with respect to the revenue sharing of incentive and these incentives will no longer be taxable. The benefit for revenue sharing has been specifically given only for promotion of the rupee debit cards and low value Bheem UPI transactions. The fifth announcement is with respect to the applicability of GST on extra neutral alcohol and GST council now recommends that an amendment be made to section 9 subsection 1 of the CGST Act for not leaving GST on this product for manufacture of alcoholic liquor for human consumption. It must be remembered that there are two important aspects to it. One, that this must be for human consumption and second, this there must be a manufacture of alcoholic liquor. Sixth, electronic commerce operators has something to cheer. The TCS rate for collection has now been reduced from 1% to 0.5%, which means that the financial burden on them will be less, but at the same time, they cannot skip the compliance burden. All taxpayers facing challenge under the provisions of section 16.4 of the CGST Act will have a lot to cheer from the GST Council recommendation. In the last video, we had spoken about the extended timelines which were given for the four first financial years under the GST by which the credit will not be denied when this is taken by 30th of November 2021. The related point is in cases of the cancellation of the registration. So from the date of the cancellation of the registration till the date when this cancellation is revoked, the taxpayers, if they submit their returns within 30 days, then they will get the relaxation under 16.4. The consequences is this, that if the GST registration was cancelled, but that cancellation has now been revoked, then in those circumstances, after the revocation, if you file the return in a time bound manner, the implications, the harsh implications of section 16.4, which would have been otherwise applicable to you will now be relaxed. Eighth is with respect to section 11a, which is proposed to be inserted. Now, what happens as per this provision is that the government is now being empowered 
to regulate those issues where the tax was short paid or was not paid and there are a couple of important aspects this non payment or short payment should have been due to common trade practice there must be a regularization which the government must feel is appropriate and the government becomes empowered now for instance what could be these situations this could happen in a naturally bundled service when a person goes to the hotel and the hotel rate is different from what he consumes within the five star hotel and as a general common trade practice these are treated as naturally bundled services but there could be certain disputes the government by way of this insertion of section 11a will get powers to address these issues and hence the industry issues will get resolved and be expedited ninth it helps the indian exporters in lot of cases what happens is that there is an upward revision of the prices for the indian exporters and they still do not get the relevant benefit of the refund of the input taxes by way of these amendments the indian exporters will be able to obtain enhanced refunds based on the new formula tenth is with respect to the clarification with respect to import of services between the foreign companies and the related indian company in these cases in most of these situations the recipient would be subject to full tax the government has come out with the clarification that in such cases the deemed value for the import of services could be taken as nil and the deemed open value will be taken as nil now what happens by that is that because there is a full tax passed through in these cases the dispute on valuation will go off and hence this value can be treated as nil a very welcome move 11th is the recommendation with respect to section 175c while industry was waiting for lot of clarifications on this section the clarifications have come but possibly only with a limited scope for ducts and manholes used in the network of optical fiber cables we must keep in mind that the larger issue on the applicability of the block credits under section 175c 175d and other provisions of section 175 are before the honorable supreme court and industry waits with a bated breath to get some sort of a judgment in their flavor so that the objectives are of gst are not defeated 12 banking sector has another reason to cheer and this time with respect to the custodial services the gst council has very categorically provided that the place of provision for custodial services would be based on the provisions of the igst act which is based on the recipient based category and hence the place of provision for these custodial services would be treated outside of india most of these banks in india were facing the tax issues applicability of tax issues on these custodial services the related point also remains is that once the place of provision is outside of india these services could qualify as exports and these banks could be now eligible even to claim benefit of the exports under gst 13 with respect to corporate guarantee the gst council recommends amendment to rule 282 There was an amendment to this rule in 2023 when the deemed value of corporate guarantee was fixed. The benefit which has now come is with respect to the related party transactions where the tax will not be levied in cases of exports or where full input tax credit is available to the recipient. In a way, the corporate guarantee issue will have only relevance in those cases where full input tax credit or refund is not eligible in terms of exports which means that the battle with respect to corporate guarantee continues because there will be tax cascading which will happen in most of the other cases which would be subject to the deemed valuation of 1% for corporate guarantee 14 there is another change with respect to section 16 sub section 4 and this time this is with respect to the reverse charge mechanism when the procurements are from unregistered dealers and the gst council recommends that the time limit for claiming the credit for the recipient would be based on the financial year in which the invoice has been issued by the recipient 
which means that there is some sort of relaxation which has been given for the recipient and again the provisions of section 164 will act beneficially for the purchases which are being made by the registered persons from the unregistered persons 15 the gst council announced that there will be lot of clarifications by way of circulars for important issues such as reimbursement of securities esops the clarification in respect of amount of premium in life insurance services which is not included in the taxable value extended warranty provided by manufacturers taxability of loan granted between related persons in this video we would not talk specifically what these clarifications would be but we will talk at length when these clarifications are there in public domain Tenth announcement is with respect to the transitional credit and the viewers must always read the famous decision of Delhi High Court of Brand Equity versus Union of India for transitional credit, which set the tone. The announcement which has today come is with respect to the credit for the input service distributors for the invoices which were issued before the appointed date. And the council recommends an amendment to section 140 subsection 7 to address this issue. 17th. There have been announcements with respect to the time limits for issuing of the demand orders, de demand notices and the orders as we know that section 73 and 74 prescribe for different time limits based on fraud etc. The GST council has re recommended that for the financial year 24-25 onwards there will be certain common deadlines which will be given. We will have to see that what those common deadlines are, but it will be interesting to observe those deadlines. At the same time, the time limit to pay a reduced penalty has been increased from 30 days to 60 days so that the taxpayers has a larger time period to decide on reduced penalties and take the benefit. Refund is restricted with respect to those goods which are exported on which export duty is levied. And rightly so, the government does not want to incentivize certain supplies and hence refund has been denied whether the benefit has been claimed after payment of duty or without payment of duty. In all of these situations, including the situations when the supply is made to the SEZ, no benefit of refund will be given to these supplies which are exported and are subjected to export duties. 19. For those classes of taxpayers who are required to file returns with respect to the tax collected at source, the recommendation is that you file the returns every month irrespective of whether you were supposed to deduct the tax at source or not. So the compliance burden may increase, but at the same time, the government wants to keep a complete track and monitor these transactions uh, so that there is no tax leakage. 20th is with respect to the announcements on anti-profiteering, something which is very close to us as we are arguing a lot of anti-profiteering matters for real estate sector, for food and beverages sector and FMCG sector. The announcement is very welcome because it provides for a sunset clause and provides a date that on 1st of April 2025 onwards, there will not be any application which means that this is the date which has been fixed after which there can be no application with respect to the anti-profiteering, which means that for any supply after this date will not be covered and for any supply prior to this date could be covered only when the application for anti-profiteering is made on that specific date. While the industry was expecting some announcements with respect to the methodology for these diverse sectors, but I think the GST Council was not uh, too keen to announce those methodologies and frameworks as of now, but perhaps the industry waits with a bated breath to see whether such methodologies are there in public domain so that the investigations at different forums and litigation before High Court and Supreme Court is addressed pragmatically. Thank you to my viewers for watching this video. Keep watching us and wait for the next video.